1939, God called a young man from the Texas prairie to begin a ministry that would reach to the ends of the earth. And today, more than 50 years later, Pastor John Osteen has kept that vision of reaching the unreached and telling the untold. Building a church where more than 10,000 people are being touched every week with the gospel. Taking the good news of Jesus Christ throughout North America via television. And now making an impact in the nations of the earth. Where pastors are trained and supported for a new generation of men like John Osteen. Hearing the voice of God and answering that call. From the streets of Fort Worth to a vacant feed store. And now, exploding decades later into a ministry that reaches literally around the globe. A ministry that spans 50 years of miracles. And now, Pastor John Osteen. Welcome to the program, everyone. My name is Joel Osteen. This is my wife, Victoria, and we're so excited that you've joined us today to study God's Word. And that's just what we're going to do. In just a few minutes, my dad's going to be sharing from, the, from his heart on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you know, the Bible says that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And what that tells me is that the truth that I don't know can't help me. It can't set me free. It can't help me in my everyday life. That's why I try to study and learn God's Word, and that's exactly what you, we want you to do. And you know, today, why don't you pick up your phone and call a friend, tell them that they can learn something about God's Word. It can help you be an overcomer in your life. Maybe you haven't heard a lot about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but today is an excellent chance for you to hear that and understand it, and you'll really be blessed. It's coming up in just a few minutes. My dad's going to be sharing on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Joel, let's just tell the people a little bit about Lisa and uh, an update on her condition. As most of you know, Lisa was in her office about January 30th, opening her mail as she normally does. She opened a package, a bomb exploded, wounding her stomach and her legs. But we're just happy to say that Lisa is out of the hospital and recovering well. She was in the hospital about two weeks. The doctors operated on her. They have released her with a clean bill of health, saying there is no permanent damages. And we just praise the Lord for that. In fact, Lisa's going to be with us next week on this program. She's going to share with us her account of that day. Now, that is really incredible because I've talked to Lisa, and when I, when I hear how she felt, it just, it, just, it just makes me understand more that God is a miracle worker, and it makes me realize that He can turn our tragedies into miracles. It's going to be really exciting next week at this same time. Lisa will be sharing a little bit. But right now, let's go into the main auditorium here at Lakewood Church, and we're going to study God's Word. Once you get your Bible, and we're going to, my dad's going to share on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's hold up our Bibles and make the devil mad and Jesus glad. Wave them around a little bit. Say, this is my Bible. This is my I am what it says I am. I am. He says, I have. I, have what says I, have. I can do what he says I can do. I can do what says I Today I will be taught the Word of God. I, I boldly confess. I boldly my, mind my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Heart is receptive. I'll, never I'll never be the same. I am about to receive, about to receive into, my into my heart the incorruptible seed, the, incorruptible the indestructible seed, the, indestructible the living seed the of the Word of God. Will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We welcome the television audience. We invite you to open your Bibles to Acts chapter 8, and we'll preach to you and teach you the Word of God from that wonderful passage of Scripture. We are aware that many of you are watching and viewing. You may be in prison, you may be in your home, you may be in a restaurant someplace or a hotel, but we welcome you. Can I have a good amen? amen. I can't hear you. Amen. We do welcome you to the telecast. Get your Bible, study with us, or if you don't have a Bible there, just listen to the Word of God, because I'm not only teaching the people here in Lakewood Church, I want to help you. You know, since this bombing uh, in, our, in our office here, and, uh, and all of the commotion that that caused, one of the great things that, that, uh, that blessed me in all of it, and God does bring blessing out of cursing. God does not send the storm, but he'll invade the storm and guide the winds. 
God does not send the trouble, but he'll certainly be with you in trouble. He's a very present help in trouble. He's not just present, he's very present. Everybody say very present. Very present. And God has been with me and Dodie and the family and Lisa and all, all, the, all the church here in a miraculous way. But I want to share with the television audience that one of the things that impressed me greatly was the fact that the body of Christ just rallied together. I mean, you didn't, you wouldn't even think there were any denominations anywhere. Just the family of God sharing and blessing our family. I got a beautiful letter from an Episcopal rector. How he blessed me with that letter. We got letters from the Catholic community, the Jewish community. We got letters from uh, the Baptist and the, and the Methodist, the Lutheran and, and, and Church of Christ and all these people. They, they just poured out their hearts. We're praying. Our prayer group met. We believe God. We thank God for the miracle. I'll tell you, we have a wonderful family of God. Yeah. Could I have a better amen? Amen. Yeah. And you know, I have such a desire, a burning desire to help the body of Christ. And it doesn't matter what particular church you go to. I've discovered in all of this, there are good consecrated people who love God in every denomination. So that's why we want to teach you today. I want to talk to you about, you know, about how you can be liberated with the power of the Holy Ghost. It belongs to all of you precious people. And uh, this chapter right here talks about some things that, uh, that, that we need to understand so we can be uh, free to believe God. Now, you know, I was taught that uh, the church was baptized in the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And, uh, you know, that was for the whole church. Well, you know, they didn't get saved for us on the day of Pentecost. They didn't get baptized in water for us. How can they get baptized in the Holy Ghost for us? Everybody has got to have his own touch from God. And uh, then, you know, I used to have the idea, and I want to share with this, uh, with the uh, denominational people listening. I used to have the idea if somebody talked about the power of God and the Holy Ghost and, and you know, more from God, that uh, they didn't even think I was Christian. They didn't even think I knew anything about the Holy Ghost. We see, we got to get away from those ideas because uh, I know that every one of you love God. I know you have the Holy Ghost uh, in regeneration. I know you know God and love God. Uh, I just have some good news. You've been such a blessing to us. I want to tell you, you can have the power of God right there in your denomination, right where you are. You can have signs, wonders, and miracles, and you can have a supernatural life. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read this, and then I'll get to that. I want to share some things with you. In Acts chapter 8, it says, And Saul was consenting unto his death, Stephen's death. At that time, there was great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered and brought throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the who? Say it out loud. All the preachers, or the ministers, uh, stayed in Jerusalem. Look at verse 4. Therefore they that were scattered abroad, that's lay people, they, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere doing what? Preaching the word. Everybody. They're not preachers. They're just lay folks. They went everywhere preaching the word. Oh, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many were taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. Now look up here just a moment. This is a layman, and he is preaching the word of God, preaching Christ unto them, sharing the supernatural Christ with them, and signs and wonders begin to happen. Demons begin to cry out and come out, and lame people begin to walk. In verse 12, but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think they would immerse them in water to show forth the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus unless they were saved, unless they were born again? Do you think those disciples would do that? No way in the world. No. They, they received the Lord Jesus Christ. They were born again. And as Peter said in Acts chapter 9, can any man forbid water? So they baptized. So they baptized these people. These were saved, born again people. Could I have an amen? amen. Now that, I tell you, the first experience you need with God is to be born again. You must be born again. And you're born of the Spirit. 
And every Christian has the Spirit of God dwelling in him because he witnesses, Holy Ghost witnesses with our spirit that we're the children of God. And that's the reason the Bible says, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost out of your belly, Jesus said, shall flow rivers of living water. What you've got inside of you will flow out of you and give you another language and you'll get a baptism of power. So, so don't be afraid of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You already got the Holy Ghost in you. He just wants to rise up and inundate you and fill you and saturate you with that power. Now notice here, they were all baptized in water. Now normally I'd just stop there and say, well, now we got them saved, got them baptized in water. I mean, that's just good enough. Let's just go ahead. That's all there is. See, that's what I've said for years. That's all there is. This chapter always disturbed me. <laughs> You know, the Word of God will disturb you if you'll read it. Amen. Now, this is not the Pentecostal handbook. By the way, the paper said I was a, a Pentecostal preacher. I am not a Pentecostal preacher. I am an ordained Southern Baptist minister in a charismatic church. <laughs> That's right. Look at verse 14. Now, when the apostles were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, now isn't this a strange thing, and yet it's clear in the Bible, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to see that that's in your Bible. You don't have to come out here and join Lakewood Church. You don't have to change, go get in a Pentecostal church, anything like that. God loves every one of you precious people. You, you're born again. You have the Holy Ghost. But now you can, you can have what the Bible calls receive the Holy Ghost. Now, I was born again in 19 years. I had never received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. They came down and prayed for these same people who had been baptized in water. Listen, folks, over in India... Even now, these other, uh, uh, other countries over there, it was just like in the Bible. When they received water baptism in the Bible, it cut them off from the Jewish community. It cut them off from the areas out there where people uh, accepted them. It was a major thing to be baptized in water. And that's why some of our friends are in, in prison in Nepal, because they baptized people in water. Somebody said, oh, Brother Osteen, you just preach Pentecostal doctrine. You just preach the Assembly of God doctrine. You just preach. No, they may believe it, but I'm preaching the Bible. And I think all of you precious people in every denomination have a right to what's in the Bible. Yeah. And I just have such a love for you. I want to share it because once I saw it in the Bible, you know, it, it, I began to be, be able to believe. It says, who when they came down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. Now that word fallen just simply means that they're going to get inundated with the Holy Ghost. Only they were baptized in the name or on the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on these saved people and they received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That change revolutionized my life in 1958 revolutionized the life of my family and revolutionized Lakewood Church and all the success that we've had is not to be attributed to John Osteen and Dodie Osteen because we couldn't even fill up that little building seating 234 people but the Holy Ghost is a mighty demonstrator of God's mercy and power Amen. did you know if the Spirit of God is allowed to work in every life of every denominational person listen to me and every minister, every priest and every denomination, listen, we would shake our churches would be so big they'd grow so large, we would shake this town, we would shake this nation we would shake the world yeah. because it's not by might it's not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts yeah. Hallelujah. 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 but you know I didn't believe all these things I didn't believe all these things. And I was bound by a million chains in the dark hole of tradition. You can't go to college and seminary and be taught against this and preach 19 years against it and snap your fingers and come out of it. I was bound in the dark hole of tradition. Somewhere I knew there was light. Somewhere I knew there was power. Somewhere I knew there was victory. But I couldn't get out. 
I'd read my Bible and I'd see these things in the Bible in the book of Acts and, and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I'll tell you, I, I just said, oh God, I, I wish, I wish, I wish, oh God, I wish we could have that today. But every voice of every professor in college and seminary rose up like a, the roaring of a lion and said, not so, not so. It's all passed away. It's not for today. And I believe the devil's lie. 19 years I was in that dark hole of tradition. I was saved. I did the best I could. I preached as best I could. But I didn't have any power. didn't have any signs, wonders, and miracles. And one day, I'd like to tell this story. I was sitting with an Assembly of God preacher. Be careful of Assemblies of God. Everybody say, God bless them. And uh, he was sharing with me. He said, Brother Osteen, he said, you know, a, a little girl in our church got, uh, in the power of the Holy Ghost spoke in another language, gave a message in tongues in another language. Now, you've heard me tell this, and I still remember it. I thought, dear God in heaven, help that little girl. She'll be a mental case. She'll be put in an institution soon because, you know, that's for just old, ugly women, cross-eyed women, snaggletooth women, and little girls. <laughs> I just thought that's not, 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 not in truth to that. I didn't believe in that more at all. And uh, so he said she spoke in another language. Then he said, Brother McCorkle, who now lives in this area, by the way, our missionary in Africa at that time was present. And he stood and said, people, this child is speaking in the language of, of the tribe that I minister to in Africa. And he gave the meaning of that, of that message. I want you to know that's the first time in all of my life I ever came face to face with a supernatural gift of the Holy Ghost. And that one experience exploded in my heart, broke every chain, and blasted me out of that dark hole of tradition. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I was free. Then I took off my denominational glasses, unplugged my denominational ears, and I began to read the Word of God, and I saw, and I received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. But you see, I'm thinking about all of these precious people in every denomination now who blessed us during this time. I'm thinking about how much they love Jesus. How much they, they want to serve Jesus. How they want to please God. And they, they're just like, many of them just like I was. They don't know there's something else. And we, we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. We don't ask you for a penny. We come through these cameras because we love you. And we want to share that there's more. As one black minister said when he got the baptism, he said, Pastor, I found there's more on the menu. There's more than just bread and butter. There's more than just uh, tamales and beans. There's more than just salad. Thank God there's coconut pie. Amen. Amen. And I was thinking about how every member of the body of Christ ought to be anointed with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Ought to have this baptism in the Holy Ghost that will allow you to speak in other languages. Amen. You see, your father is a spirit. You are a spirit. And God's design is that you may be able to talk to him out of your spirit to bypass your mind so you can have fellowship spirit to spirit. Amen. See, that's God's thought. And the devil has wrecked all of that and, and told people you got to leave your church and join this and join that in order. No, it's God's idea to liberate your spirit so you can speak in a, a language of the spirit directly to him and bypass your mind. I think about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit that, that will never be in manifestation unless, unless people get the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Never. See, there's the supernatural gift of the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, the gift of the working of miracles, the gift of special faith, the gifts of healing, the gift of tongues, interpreting the tongues and prophecy. These are supernatural equipments for us. Amen. Now, suppose every person in every denomination was suddenly baptized in the Holy Ghost and these gifts begin to operate in their businesses wherever they are. We would shake this time. Amen. And God's mercy is shown through these gifts. I think about just what? One Sunday ago, this little boy that was dead, born deaf, born deaf. Everybody say born deaf. Born deaf. I think he was about eight or nine years old, something like that, stood right here, born deaf, didn't know how to say a word, maybe just a word or two he had seen by lip, but couldn't talk because he'd never heard. 
Does, does God care about that little boy? Yes. You saw him as a congregation. God healed him perfectly, and he could hear perfectly. And they brought him back last Wednesday night, grinning from ear to ear, ear to ear, and his father said he's still hearing perfectly well, delivered by the power of God. That's the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Then we were in our pastor's meeting. We had about seven, 650 people in the pastor's meeting. And suddenly as we were worshiping God down there, the word of knowledge and the gifts of the Spirit began to function. And God spoke to me. The anointing of God came like fire on me. And he said, there's a woman here. She has a, a hurting in her left breast, a, a growth in her left breast, and a hurting in her left shoulder. If you would stand, I got good news. Well, several stood, but the one that God was talking about, I said, I'm not even going to pray for you. I'm going to announce to you that you are free, that the Lord has healed you. You go and examine yourself in the restroom and give us a report. She went to the restroom, examined herself. She was terribly worried about the growth in her breast, but it was entirely gone. She was healed by the power of God. Lift your hands and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You say, Brother Osteen, does anybody ever get saved as a result of that? Listen, we have people come down here by the scores and give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. But you see, the Bible says in the book of Joel, blow the trumpet in Zion. That's the church. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Wake up the mighty men. Now I'll tell you, we need to sound. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Tell you, God has a great church on the earth. They're called by many denominational names, but there's a great body of believers throughout all the world. We need to blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Amen. The alarm is we can't face the devil's power without Holy Ghost power. Amen. In this world of trouble, we need to be anointed, clothed with the power of God. Amen. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. And then it says, wake up the mighty men. I tell you, there are ministers called of God in every denomination. They love God, and they're serving the best they know how, but they're asleep to the power of God. They're groaning. They're yearning for the power of God. I'll tell you, we ought to pray, and we ought to believe, and we can wake up the mighty men. Wake up the priests. Wake up the pastors. Wake up the apostles. Wake up all those in authority so they can receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Wake up the mighty men. And I believe they're waking up. Yes. I believe they're waking up. Amen. I believe God is going to... The Bible says He satisfies the longing soul. He satisfies the longing soul. Listen, He doesn't look on you and call you a, 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 by a denominational name. He looks for hungry, thirsty souls. Wherever there's a man or woman reaching out for God, wherever there's somebody longing for the power of God, God will meet you. Amen. God will cause you to get more light. That's why you tuned into this telecast, because you have a hungry heart. You want the power of God. Oh, the thrill, the thrill of, uh, of sensing the Holy Ghost rising up, and then you talking to God in another language, spirit to spirit. The thrill of the Holy Ghost manifesting His Holy Ghost power in your life, and, and you seeing the miraculous things that God can do. Amen. I'm telling you, that's a thrill. That's too good to keep to ourselves. Well, to share it with everybody. Well, to encourage them to receive the Holy Ghost, the fullness of His power. Paul asked him in Acts 19, when he met certain disciples, he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Everybody say, I'm a believer. I'm well, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Yeah. See, that, that's, uh, that's what we're talking about. So well, I thought I had all the Holy Ghost. Said, well, no, the one that gave you the new birth can now immerse you in power and you will enter a new dimension. Somebody said to me, uh, uh, a preacher said to me when I gave him my testimony right after I received, he said, oh, Brother O.C., you just rededicated your life. I said, no, I didn't. I wore my rededicator out years ago. I had it overhauled several times. I, it wasn't a rededication. I said, brother, when you get the baptism in the Holy Ghost, you are put into a dimension of supernatural things you have never touched in all of your life. And you know, my heart grieves for you women and you men, you ministers, you priests, and others 
If you just knew what blessings there was in going on beyond your salvation to be anointed with power, the power of the Holy Ghost, call it receiving the Holy Ghost, call it a baptism of the Holy Ghost, call it whatever you want to, but you need that power. You need to get into the supernatural realm. If you get in that supernatural realm, God will use you mightily. And I'm going to believe that every one of you listening will let God have his way in your life and let Jesus baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire and you will enter in to a supernatural dimension.